Hello, hello. This is so cool. This is my last time with our friends at Meridian Magazine. And I just want to welcome everybody. Please post where you're from. And I want to reply to each and every one of your comments. And I pray that you saw my um, live I did earlier or the stories that I've done. So if you have any questions, the convert is here to answer them. I must admit, I'm still a greenie. So I'm still learning and bear with me. I even have my missionary in training badge which I wear all the time. I know little kids wear it, but you know what? I'm green, so I get to wear it. But it is Instagram. It is, um, this is our last takeover that I'm going to be doing, and I'm just super excited to be able to answer your questions and wave to all of you guys. So, um, yes, whenever I teach at the MTC, I always wear this, and I know they wear white badges when they teach at the MTC. But if you didn't see my video before, I am going to ask that you watch it. It is saved on IGTV for, uh, let me just, I'm trying to multitask here. I'm trying to wave to everybody that comes in. So please post in the comments where you're from. And if you have any questions, yes, I am the guy who stole the Book of Mormon. Holler! And I have been having so much fun doing this takeover. But the Holy Ghost has been really prompting me tonight to talk about judgment and also how we all can be better member missionaries. So earlier, you saw me uh, talk about how I had presidential approval, uh, first presidential approval to have my endowment early. Well, I brought you guys a surprise. I actually brought you the letter I received from the First Presidency that announced that Dennis Schleicher was able to have his, and this is in my office, and I'm just going to read you, um, Dear President Elwell, I have been asked to advise you that in response to your request to, for inquiry for First Presidency has authorized as an exception to the policy Dennis Schleicher, who has been baptized and confirmed on August 19, 2017, to receive his endowment early. And that means the world to me because I am proud. And I don't want to use the word proud full, but I am honored to be able to have my temple recommend in my wallet displayed at all times because it shows that I will constantly like on my CTR ring, on my wedding band, choose to remember him. Choose to remember God, current temple recommend holder. So how do we become less judgmental? This is a really good question. So I just want to answer some of your questions. That's awesome, brother. Thank you so much for that comment. Uh, you need to leave us sins us longer as it shows. Oh, so I'm at my ward right now. Um, and this is the lobby, and that's the door that the missionaries prayed for the walk-in. And I'm in Connecticut, but my missionary, Sam, Utah friendly, whatever that means, because I love my peeps in Utah. I say, I'm heading to Utah to recharge my accent and play with my peeps, because that's where I feel a lot of love when I'm in the, I call it the planet of Utah that I've landed in. So, uh, let's go back to, um... Myself, I was extremely judgmental of the church. I was extremely judgmental of each and every one of you. And I said that. I used to slam the door in missionaries' faces or get up in their face and say, you're homophobic. Your church doesn't love gay people. But see, what you don't realize is I grew up in a fundamentalist born-again Christian church where my father's a deacon of a, of a, a church that's 6,000 members and I was always told, God hates you. God's going to strike you dead. Jesus doesn't love you. And I had that for so many years. I felt I wasn't loved. And it was members of the church. Jesus Christ had shook me and said, Dennis, God loves you. Jesus loves you. He loves everybody. That's an important message. But even after that, I was still judgmental. I judged a woman. Her name is Al Carraway. You may know her as uh, the author of More Than the Tattooed Mormon. 
And I judged her because when I was in Palmyra, New York, I was asked to read her book. And I was give, I was shown it and they said, you want to order? And I said, oh, that's nice. I'm like, what do I want to be about some tattooed woman for? I'm scared of needles. I don't want, I don't have tattoos. Like, holler, like, why would I want to do that? And I discriminated against Al because I didn't think I had anything in common with her. When in fact, it was a year later that I listened to her audiobook because my friends in Utah were sending me selfie videos with her where she'd say, hi, Dennis, this is Al Caraway sending love and light your way. And I'd be like, what are they sending me that for my iPhone? Delete. I was deleting Al. Holler. So when I was asked to write my book, is he not? Why would a gay man join the Church of Jesus Christ? Look who wrote the foreword. Al Caraway. And I will never forget what she texted my iPhone. She texted me a picture of holding my manuscript on a treadmill. And she said, I was only going to read 15 minutes. Four and a half hours later, my hips and thighs. Thank you. Because that's what it took her to read the entire manuscript was four and a half hours. And then she goes, Dennis, you discriminated against me. You discriminated against me. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, Al. But aren't we all judgmental at times? I mean, don't we all find ourselves that we may judge somebody because we think that they're not wearing their garments or that they're not following the words of wisdom or, you know, myself personally, I am, when I was in Utah, I had friends say to me, uh, I want to, uh, let's go to Starbucks and get a juice or something or get some water. And I'd say, no, because I'm recognized in Utah, no matter where I go. And I don't want to be walking out with a Starbuckles cup and then have everybody go, oh, there's that convert. He slipped off that wagon. And so I just say avoid the appearance of evil. But when in all actuality, who are we accountable to? We're accountable to him. We're accountable to our bishop. We're accountable to our stake president, our apostles and our prophet, and ultimately Jesus Christ. So if I go into a Starbucks and buy a hot cocoa, or a juice, and it's in a Starbucks cup, should I be judged for that? No, but it's my fear. It's my fear to say, avoid the appearance of evil. That's a, a thing I learned when I was newly baptized, avoid the appearance of evil. So I go with what feels right. But you know, I get judged a lot. People say, well, you're gay. How can you be gay and be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? And I say, well, easy. I just follow the commandments set forth by the First Presidency and the Apostles. And they say the whole message about General Conference was about loving all. And as I write in the back of my book, I say, no matter your religion, faith, background, sexual orientation, or race, I challenge you to choose love. So I'm going to tell you a little history about this. This cover has it's made church history having the first rainbow flag on the church-owned publisher. It was supposed to have a picture of me, and I didn't want that. We took thousands of photos, dozens of photo shoots, and they had me like going, is he nuts? Or they had me posing like Al Carraway holding my stolen Book of Mormon, although she did not steal her book. She got it for free from the missionaries. If I would have only known, I would have called. Um, so I really, really, when I was shown this cover, I said, I don't want a rainbow flag on a church-owned publisher. I don't. And they said, but Dennis, we prayed about it. And I said, oh, heavens, do share and they said, the white puzzle piece represents the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the Holy Ghost. The rainbow puzzle piece represents the LGBTQIA community. And this is showing there's a place for both. And I went, I embrace it. I accept it. So, and then who would have ever thought that the missionaries would have complained about me? And they, call, they were calling the mission president complaining about me. And you know what they were complaining about? So 
the mission president's wife said, I hope you don't mind. We ordered you some clothes. Um, and I wonder if I have, oh, I have that right here. Um, we ordered you a rainbow bow tie. We ordered you a rainbow tie, a rainbow handkerchief, and rainbow socks. Because the missionaries are complaining you're not dressing gay enough to go on lessons. And I'm like, who would have ever thought I would have joined the Church of Jesus Christ and they're saying I'm not dressing gay enough? And then my temple president for Pride Month bought me the Apple Watch band that goes with my Apple Watch that has the rainbow on it as well. So this is the temple president is bu- and his wife are buying this. I mean, this is unheard of. So this has been a completely different journey. So let me tell you how I loosen up a little. I like to wear fun socks. So there's a friend of mine that owns uh, BOM Socks. And I don't get paid for this. I don't get paid for partnering with, with magazines. I don't charge anything because we're sharing the gospel and it's free. And when I do devotionals and firesides and stake centers, I don't even mention my book because that's not the point. The point is not for me to make 25 cents a book. The point is for me to share. If I can get through and say, Satan, be gone. Go back in that bush. There's no time for you. I'm serving him. That I'm to strengthen your testimony. But look at how cool. These are given to me. These are Sacred Grove socks. It's got the BOM logo. They're James 1.5. And it says, ask of God. That's one of my favorite verses. I love it. Any of us lack wisdom, ask of God. Holler. But I have some even cool ones here. I have Nephi, Nephi, First Nephi, 3.7. And it's, I... Uh, go and do. And on the back, it has the BOM. And these are super, super, super comfortable. So, but, and I have BOM socks with Salt Lake City Temple. I have Provo City Center Temple socks. And these I wear a lot because I, uh, my younger brother passed away in 2004 from a drug overdose. And if any of you have read my book, Is He Nuts? It was one of the hardest chapters for me to write. But my younger brother was one of my revelations into joining the church because he said to me, just like he was speaking in my car or speaking in my ears, Dennis, I would be there doing this with you. I want you to join this church so you can complete my work. And I did not even know what ordinance work was at the time. So uh, when I had my limited temple recommend, I flew to Provo City Center because I felt prompted a few months after I was baptized, and that's where I did my younger brother's proxy baptism and confirmation. And at the Hartford Temple you saw today is where I did his initiatory. And then I flew back out once I had my full temple recommend, and I completed his, his endowment at the Pova City Center. And I could feel him. So I know that through judgment, Jesus, my brother, would not want me to judge people. My grandma was 97. She just passed away a few months ago. I was able to teach her the plan of salvation a month before she passed. And she said, honey, that sounds lovely. As my firstborn grandson, I can't wait for you to do my proxy work and seal me to grandpa. And so I know that my grandma doesn't want me to be judgmental of people. With all the judging that's going on in the world today with the shootings and the violence and the the hate and the persecution, if anybody knows persecution, it's members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Just think of the pioneers. Think of everything the pioneers went through. Think about what the LGBTQ community went through or goes through. Think about what the black community goes through. That is persecution. We want to turn up the love. We want to lead by example. We want to bear each other's burdens. I have a really hard time being on social media. I can't do, I call it fake book, because um, I open it up and converts have a pass and I was a hot mess. And I'll see things and it'll say, 10 years ago today, you were doing this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't delete that fast enough. I can't even look at it. So I stay on Instagram. And there's a reason for that. 
because I was not on Instagram before I joined the church. And it was Al Caraway said, you got to get on Instagram. And I'm like, Insta what? <laughs> I'm like, I don't get it. And so now I, and I purposely don't follow people back on Instagram because I keep my feed clean, just like we keep our minds pure and ready to enter the temple at all times. Because I have such a hard time when I see returning missionaries and they're doing risque things or showing that they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing. It breaks my heart because I served with them. They taught me. I taught them. We taught each other. And I can't bear to see that. So I just leave. I follow official church sites. I I don't even follow family members on Instagram anymore because they all unfollowed me. They don't accept my parents still, they think I'm in a cult. And you know what? I have to lead by example. And with the hundreds of convert baptisms I've had, because of my book, it's it, it, because of my story, because of my journey, I, it bothers me that I can't even convert my own parents. But I understand it's in his time. Everybody has to know when that is. So I have a few questions I want to read. Um, I'm not really good at multitasking, so I apologize, but I will get back to these when I post these on, okay, so we have somebody that just says a person in the eternal family shared emotionally, okay, uh, who is a convert in judging. I like that. Thank you, LDS nurse. Is it Honda? Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I see the heart, so I, I know I got it right. <laughs> but I can be a little dyslexic, so I turn things around sometimes, and whoopsie! You know, and I average about 200 DMs a day of faith crisis and people calling for, crying for help, or their grandchild just came out, or... Um, so let me... T- I'm going to feel inspired to share something with you. A lot of questions I get is, my nephew is getting married to a man, and... I don't think I should go to his wedding. And my answer is, is so my best friend, Stephen, I've known him since high school, is gay. He got married um, a few weeks before I had my endowment. And my book was just picked up by the church. And I didn't want to go to his wedding. So I met with my stake president or somebody in the presidency. And I says, I don't want to be associated with photos on Facebook being at a, a, a same-sex wedding. And my, and I was told, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Jesus would be spending his time with the marginal. He would be spending time with your friend, Stephen. He would be spending time with those that are disabled or have learning disabilities or are less fortunate or the poor. He'd be ministering to those, just like our prophet does. When you see him in the Philippines holding and hugging children, he is all about children. The youth are the future. Strive to be. Hashtag strive to be to hashtag hear him. So I'm going to leave that with you, but it's personal agency and that we all have that agency. You know, we can choose to be, you know, how could you miss out on a child's wedding or a family member's wedding? Because we want those people to always feel like they are welcomed through those doors right there, right here. They can always walk through those doors. They need to feel safe. They need to know that they are welcomed in this ward, that they are welcomed in this chapel. It's dark here, so I didn't turn on the lights in the chapel. Or they're welcomed to go into my bishop's office and talk to him. And I have a master key. I can pretty much go anywhere in here, but I always leave this as sacred area because it's my bishop's. But, um, you know, I'm feeling compelled, though, to show you um, his wife is a professional photographer for temples. So I think I'm going to share with you some artwork she's done because I think you would probably enjoy that. So this is the Hartford Temple that she photographed, and it's on the official church website. And that is pretty cool. And this is the Rome Temple that she went to, which is pretty cool. 
So she's a great photographer. And I'm proud to call her a friend. And I'm proud to call my bishop and my stake presidency and everybody in my ward a friend. Because we are a 24-hour church. We are always here for each other. And I don't care if it's 3 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning. If I'm having a faith crisis, I am going to reach out and I'm going to ask for a comfort blessing. And I want to challenge you to do the same because we love you no matter what. And I want to leave you with one more thing that I have in the back of my book. It's called Resources. And remember, this book was, was written... Uh, back when we were still allowed to use the word Mormon and the title, it just before it went to print and hardback, um, it was, uh, we had to change the title, but it says LDS hotline, call toll free 1-888-537-6600 to speak directly with the missionary or go online to www.mormon.org forward slash chat to message with the missionary directly 24 seven. So remember, you can call a missionary, you can talk to a missionary, they answer the phone by their first name. They don't tell you their companions on the phone with them. And if you say you're a member, they light up and they go, my gosh, I'm not, De I said, don't, your name's not Dennis. What's your last name? Your sister who? <clears throat> and they would say Schleicher. And I'd say, what's your companion's name? And they're like, oh my gosh, we have a member on the phone. This is so cool. So, Use that if you need to. Comment. We have thank you so much uh, for your time. And you're from, you're, you're very inspiring. And you're from San Diego, California. I used to work in Carlsbad. I've been to the Newport Temple. And I'm, I'm doing a zone conference in the Anaheim Mission. I've been to the Los Angeles Temple. I'm also the Arcadian Mission I've addressed and spoke to. And the Pasadena Stake Center, I did a fireside and devotional. So if you want a fireside in your area... My airfare is covered. So all you have to do is let me know and you'd have to bring it up. You'd have to call my state president to make sure I am temple worthy. And he's probably like, oh, heavens, I got a dentist in my stake. My phone's blowing up. So, um, yeah, if you want a fireside, I'd be more than happy to put some paprika in your stake center so we can have some fun. All right. So I'm going to say sending love and light your way. Know that I'm here for you whenever you need. Ask me anything. Do not be ashamed of it. I often get messages saying, I'm so sorry. I'm embarrassed. I hope I don't offend you. I, God's taken that all away. It's all gone. You can never offend me. This is my calling. I want to go to the Las Vegas temple. I want to go to Central Florida. I tried to go to your, your temple in Orlando, and but I guess it's, it didn't open till like 11. And I'm like, temple's open at 6 a.m. here. But they said, well, because it was a retirement community, <laughs> I guess... They'd opened at 11, so I couldn't make a session. But um, I will, you know, that's my goal is when I do, that's my only requirement. When I fly somewhere to do a fireside, I want to visit your temple. So please reach out to me. I am sending lots of love and light your way and know that I am here for you. We are family. We're eternal brothers and sisters. And if we don't meet each other in this life, we'll definitely meet each other in the celestial kingdom. Bye for now, everyone.